No one's perfect. And mistakes are the best way to learn. But who says that you're the one that has to make those mistakes? So let's take a look at some of the most common mistakes that photographers make at all experience levels, me included. First, let's start with incorrect exposure. Nailing exposure is vital for good photos and underexposure and overexposure tend to happen most often when you're shooting something that has a wide range of light in it. And out of those two options, overexposure tends to be way more difficult to deal with. And that's why things like ETTR exist as more of safe exposure practices. So ETTR stands for exposing to the right. And in practice, this means that when you're exposing your photos, you look at your histogram and you keep increasing your exposure and you stop just before anything hits the edge. And when using ETTR, you wanna expose with actual light. So don't do that with ISO, use shutter speed and aperture to increase the light that you're getting. That way you avoid overexposing anything, aka meaning that something gets so bright that the data is just lost and there's no way to recover that. And avoiding that is more important because it is significantly easier to bring things back up from the shadows and then clean it up versus just losing things to overexposure. The only real way to combat underexposure is to, well, simply bring in more light, actual light. Just like with overexposure, ETTR will help with that. So you're exposing your darker areas as far as you can before going too far. But remember that ETTR is just one tool that you can use and not a rule to just follow every time. Okay, second mistake, using the wrong aperture. This one I am extremely guilty of making time and time again, especially now that I've been doing my 365 challenge. This is one that I've been struggling with a lot. Because look, I love good looking blurred photos just as much as the next shooter. And I especially love shooting products. But in those situations and in those photos, it is extremely important to know what your depth of focus is. Because so many times I've done a lot of work to get a good looking setup going for a product shot and the lighting's perfect and everything's perfect. And then I open it up in on one and I notice that shit, I was on the widest aperture again. So only a small portion of the product is actually in focus. And that is infuriating. So focus rack or just increase your aperture. But remember that your subject might need a bit more aperture than your widest option. Okay, third mistake, not fast enough. So this is another one that I personally struggled with a lot as well. And this is remnant from the times that I was still shooting with a kit lens. Because when your aperture is a bit more limited and it was hammered into me that I need to use as low as ISO as I possibly can, I tended to compensate that with using the shutter speed as low as I could while it's still being okay when handheld. But the problem is that even though one over 125 is decent, in handheld on stationary subjects. Not all of your situations or your subjects are gonna be stationary. And if they do move, then one over 125 might not be enough and it will introduce blur and it won't be as sharp as you wanted the photo to be. So remember that it's okay to go a bit higher with your ISO if you can get your shutter speed a bit faster. That's of course, unless you're shooting something that you know will be absolutely stationary. But let's hop into the next one. Number four, keep your eyes on your backgrounds. Now this is a very common mistake. You brought your camera, you're planning on shooting maybe photos of your friends or loved ones, or just going out on the street and seeing what you get and photographing people. 
And then you find that perfect situation where the light is perfect and the scenery is perfect and your subject is, they had that perfect pose that just comes naturally to some people. But then you get that photo back, you open it in on one and then you look and see that there is a pole sticking out of their head. Now it can be difficult to get into the habit of watching the background as well when you shoot. But it's just something that you have to do because there's nothing quite like ruining a great shot with a dumpster right behind the subject. So this goes hand in hand with all the other composition and preparation techniques. When you're adjusting your camera settings, also just take a quick peek behind your subject and see what's there. And finally, number five, over editing. I'm gonna throw a wild generalization out there and make a claim that every photographer who, especially everyone who started with a digital camera are guilty of this. When you're starting out, you've seen the photos from your favorite photographers and they're all so sharp and vibrant and just, they look so damn good. So you bring your own photos to your editing software and you think that, hey, there's this slider, you know? The clarity slider or structure slider. And you just go ahead and crank that and now you got sharp photos. <sighs> you know what I'm talking about? I'm, I bet you do. We've all done it. But the sooner you get out of that mindset, you actually start learning how to edit. If you're just getting into editing, one great way to do that is by taking presets from other photographers and try to replicate that look by making the adjustments yourself. Take your photo, open them up next to your own or open them on, the, on your second monitor and then just adjust it everything and try to get as close to that look as you can. You'll most likely find out that there's just simply less editing usually involved than you thought, or in some cases, way more than you thought. But even in the cases where the editing amount is more than you thought, it's most likely in different places than you thought it was. But those are five common mistakes that photographers do, and that is regardless of your skill levels. If you, even if you're more experienced, you might still end up doing these because it's a learning process for us all. Maybe you don't do them. Maybe you're extremely meticulous with every single photo that you take. And in that case, hats off to you. But for the most of us, remember that the most important thing is to keep going out there and keep shooting and just practice. It's all about practice. You can watch as many videos as you want like this, but it all comes down to you actually doing it yourself. There you go, do me a favor, like the video and go down to the comments and let me know some of the mistakes that you've done so we can le all learn from each other. Have a great rest of your week, everyone, and I will see you all next time, okay? Bye-bye.